Hey guys, in my last video I spoke about Laravel API authentication where I discussed when to use Laravel Sanctum over Laravel Passport and when to use token-based authentication instead of sessions. Today I will be showing you how to authenticate your Next.js SBA using Laravel Sanctum's cookie-based session authentication. I already set up a very minimal project for this video that basically displays a list of tickets on the dashboard sorted by the highest priority. Our goal is to add the authentication so that the user is only able to get to the dashboard and see the tickets if they're logged in. First thing we need to do is install Laravel Sanctum, then publish configuration and migration files, and then migrate the database. My API is running in a Docker container, so I have to run this command there. While Laravel Sanctum is being installed, let's go over this API quick. So within my API routes, I only have a single route that basically fetches the tickets. This is the route that we're going to be adding authentication to. Within my web routes, I only have two endpoints. One is to log in and the other one is to log the user out. Let's go ahead and publish the configuration. Let's migrate the database. And I think we're good to go. Because we will be authenticating our SPA, we need to add this middleware to our API middleware group. Let's open the kernel class and add it right here. And what this middleware does is actually very similar to the web middleware group. First, it overwrites some of the session uh, parameters such as HTTP only and same site. And then it runs through more middleware if the request is coming from your own SPA. It encrypts cookies, then it adds cookies to the response, then it starts the session and verifies CSRF token. So let's add the protection to our API route. That would be middleware auth sanctum. And now if we try to load the page, we should get an error. And we get 401, which means the user is not authenticated. Because we're trying to authenticate our first party SPA, we need to specify that domain within our sanctum configuration file. So let's open that config file. And this is the variable that we need to set. This basically has to be set to your SPA domain. So for example, if you're running your API on a subdomain, something like API myawesomedomain.com, and your SPA is running on myawesomedomain.com, then myawesomedomain would be the value that you would set this environment variable to. In order for stateful authentication to work, your API and your SPA top-level domain must match. So in this case, this and this should be the same. If you had your SPA or API on a different domain, something like anotherdomain.com, then this would not work because they would not share the session. For local environments, if you're running it on a different port than this, you need to specify that port. In my case, I'm running my SPA on localhost 3000. So let me add that to the env file localhost 3000 and also we need to set the session domain in order for stateful authentication to work the SBA and api domains need to share a session id and for that to work we need to specify the session domain this would be your top level domain which in my case is just localhost but if we use the same uh, previous example then this would be my awesome domain dot com prefixed by the dot and that means that any subdomain and the domain itself will share the session ID. So I'm going to change this back to localhost and this should be good enough. Now if we go back to the documentation within the course and cookies section, our course configuration needs to return this header with the value of true. And to do that, we need to set the support credentials to true. And also we need to set with credentials to true for our Axios uh, instance. So let's go ahead and add that first within the course config file on Laravel API. So I'm going to open the course.php, set this to true. And note here that the paths parameter only allows API routes to go through. So you need to specify any routes that you want to be allowed as well. In my case, that is login and logout. Because my login and logout routes are within the web routes file and not within the API routes file. If in your case, your login and logout are within the API, so it's something like API slash login, then you don't need this. So let's try to log in now and see what happens. 
and we get 419 CSR token mismatch, which is expected because we haven't passed any tokens to the request and Laravel's built-in CSR protection kicks in and blocks our request. In order to fix this, we need a way to access the CSR token. To do that, we need to make an initial request to Laravel's API, which will initialize the CSR token. Let's go back to the documentation and see how that's done. We need to make the initial request to this endpoint. It simply creates an encrypted CSR token and stores it in XSRF token cookie. And then libraries like Axios automatically pass that on every request. So let's go ahead and add this part to our login component. And we need to add it right here. Since we don't care for the response, we could just change this to that. Let's also add some response handling here that if it's successful, we can redirect. And if it's not, we could uh, console log the result. So we need to check if response data error, then we could console log response data error. Otherwise, we could console log success. We will worry about the redirect in a bit. Uh, I also forgot to change this to API. So let's try to sign in now. Let's enter our credentials. And we're back to core zero. That's because this route is not allowed. So if we go back to the course configuration file, we only allow API routes, login and logout. So we just need to add that here. Let's try to log in now. And now we're getting invalid credentials. Let me clear that out. Try that again. Invalid credentials. So that means that we're hitting the API. Uh, no CSRF issues, no cores issues. Everything is working. Now we just need the correct credentials. So let me enter the correct credentials. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me show you that uh, within the application, XSRF token was initialized. This is the cookie that gets created when the initial request is sent to this endpoint. So let's try to log in now with the real password. See what we get. And we're logged in. What we need to do now is store the logged in state somewhere on our SPA so we don't have to make any additional API requests to check if user is logged in or not, especially after user refreshes or browses through the pages. There are a few ways to do this. We could either store this flag uh, within the local storage, we could store it in the session storage, or we could create a custom cookie. I'm going to create a custom cookie because it's easier to redirect the user before hitting the client side from Next.js and avoid the flash of the unauthorized page. I already have utility functions that handle login, logout, and is logged in checks. So let's go ahead and review that. I'm going to remove this and put login in here. And let's go and see what that does. So the login function here basically just creates a custom cookie with the value of true and redirects to the dashboard. The logout removes that cookie and redirects to the login page. And this logged in function simply checks that cookie. Uh, it will first try to check it on a client side. If it's not set, then it will try to uh, check it on the server side. This is useful because sometimes we may want to check if user is logged in or not before any client side components are rendered. Let's try to sign in now. And let's confirm that we don't have that cookie in here. And after we hit sign in, we are redirected to the dashboard. It loads the tickets, which means that we're logged in and the cookie is created successfully here. Now you might be wondering what if user manually creates this cookie or manually sets it to true? Uh, wouldn't the user be considered logged in? The answer to that is yes. The SPA will think that user is logged in, but as soon as it hits the API, the API will return 401 unauthenticated because Laravel Sanctum will handle the authentication on the API side. So technically they wouldn't be getting any useful data. But to have better UI and UX, we could actually easily hook into Axios via interceptors and catch such errors on any API request and manually delete the cookie and send the user to login page. Let's go ahead and do that on our uh, API.js file. So I'm going to do API.interceptors. Dot response dot use response response and then for errors we're going to check if error dot response dot status is 401 then we could do the logout that we just went over with and return the promise reject oops 
otherwise return the promise reject with error. So now even if user manually sets that cookie, they will be redirected to the login page as soon as the first API request is made. So let's try to test that. So right now we're logged in. So let's remove the Laravel session and refresh the page. So we should technically not be logged in anymore. And as you notice, we are redirected to the login page and the custom cookie was successfully removed. So now we could try to log in again. But instead of trying to log in, let's manually set the cookie to true. And let's go to the dashboard page. Let's see what happens. And as you see, we saw the flash of the dashboard page and we were redirected to the login page. And this returns 401 and everything seems to be working. Now, I still don't like that flash of the dashboard page. We could improve that. I want the user to be redirected to the login page before they see any components. To be able to do that, we need is logged in flag within our components. Let's go back to the SPA. There are a few ways we could get is logged in flag on the components. You could use a custom React hook using a context. Uh, you could check within the components use effect call whether user is logged in or not. Or the one that I like is using higher order component, kind of like a middleware so that I could pick which pages need authentication and which do not. I already have the higher order component with auth created. All I need to do is add this to the dashboard page. It uses the get initial props and checks if user is logged in using the server cookies. And this method we already went over with. And if user is not logged in, it simply redirects to the login page and returns user object with the is logged in flag. You could pass any additional properties here and those will be available within your components. So we could go back to the layout.js file and where we export in a default, we could say with auth and that should work. Now, if I try to visit the dashboard page, it should be redirecting me before I see anything. And that seems like it's working. Let's log in to make sure that everything still works. And we're logged in. The page refresh works correctly. We just need to replace this sign in button with the sign out. And that's actually very simple to implement now because we have access to these logged in flag within uh, our components. So let's go back to our SPA. And within the layout now we have access to user prop that is passed down from the with auth higher order component. And we can pass that down to auth indicator as an is logged in flag. And in here we can say, if is not logged in, then return sign out link instead of the sign in. So if not logged in, return, and this will have a custom on click handler that basically calls our uh, Laravel API to do the logout on the server side. So we can call the uh, logout route and then on success, we can do clients out logout, which basically removes the cookie and redirects to the login page. So let's test it out to make sure that this works. And we see the sign out button right now instead of the sign in. Uh, let's change that to the cursor. That looks good. And if we hit this, it should log us out. And it did. We're back to the login page. If we try to access the dashboard page, we can no longer do that. So let's try to log in. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Please hit like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you on the next video.